Hello Booktube, this is Weekly Reads. Um, I've had a very good reading week this week. It built off of a pretty good later half of um, last week's Weekly Reads. Um, since March 1st, I've been working on my contribution to March of the Mammoths, one of the big um, March Booktube reading events. Um, so I've been working on Uh, Maria Teresa, The Hapsburg Emperors in Her Time uh, by Barbara Stolberg Rillinger and translated by Robert Savage. Um, Maria Teresa was Holy Roman Empress from 1745 or 7 to 1760 something and um, the Archduchess of Austria, the Queen of Hungary, the Queen of Bohemia in her own right from 1743 to 1780. Um, her reign began with the War of the Austrian Succession when a number of European states uh, refused not necessarily to accept, well to refuse to accept her inheritance as um, the Archduchess of Austria, Queen of Bohemia, Queen of Hungary, um, but also essentially was more or less the goal was to tear apart the Habsburg possessions. Um, she managed to um, win the war of the Austrian succession, although it did cost her Silesia. Um, and then she sort of was um, a reforming monarch. Um, in the aftermath of the War of the Austrian Succession, she instituted a number of reforms. Um, and really, she was a very fascinating uh, woman. Um, so I quite like this book. Um, it was very good. Um, it's not a narrative biography of Maria Theresa. And, I thought that was its greatest weakness. It's a very subject-driven biography of her. Uh, so the first chapter, which is her early years, and the final chapter before the epilogue, which looked at her final years, but really focused more on her relationship with her adult children, um, are sort of more narrative, more chronological, while the other chapters are broken up into various subjects with various uh, sub-chapters um, sub throughout them. So my favorite chapters are the ones that dealt with the court um, and with her family. Um, well, the Habsburgs, uh, the Ch Maria Theresa's family, have been depicted as a proto- bourgeois monarchy, a sort of the transition of the ancient regime into a more bourgeois or middle class styled uh, royal family, which is what most royal families are nowadays. Um, Stolberg Rellinger shows that um, Maria Theresa's family was still very much a more traditional uh, family, although not as physically abusive to the kids as, as some other royal houses were at the time. But at the same time, it was a very toxic relationship. Maria Teresa had incredibly toxic relationships with all of her kids. And those chapters are, I mean, and sub-chapters are just fascinating. Um, I also like some of the uh, the core chapters in general, uh, the War of the Austrian Succession, the Seven Years' War chapter, I thought were great. Some of the other chapters can get up very dry, um, namely uh, the subchapter that dealt with the Enlightenment in the chapter devoted to Maria Theresa's relationship with Joseph. Um, it was incredibly dry. Much of the chapter on subjects 
is fairly dry. Uh, some of the ones on religion and um, outsiders, again, quite dry. But for the most part, I really, really enjoyed this book. It was a reading experience that I will treasure. And I'm quite pleased to have finished it. It was an accomplishment, that's for sure. Uh, so I finished Maria Teresa on Thursday, yesterday. So I had a free day today. And so I decided to read or reread um, Rain in Plural by Fiona C. Lorraine. This is one of the uh, Princeton poetry series. Um, and I picked this up late last year and read it shortly after I collected it um, and decided to reread it since I had a free day. And really, today would be like a slim volume of poetry or a volume of manga, but I pretty much read all of my manga at least several times already, so, and some of them I have some projects for, so I'm kind of holding off on reading manga. Um, so I reread Rain and Plural and quite liked it. I really enjoyed it the first time I read it and quite enjoyed it the second time around as well. And it does build up for my, uh, a poetry project I'm going to be doing in April. Um, I am collecting a lot of uh, poetry this month, um, which I'll talk about when I get to my uh, March book haul, which, if you don't already know, I have reached a thousand books, and I'm going well past a thousand. I'm a little bit insane this month, but hey, I enjoyed it. Um, so what will I be reading this coming reading week? So I think this weekend I'm going to be doing a double Agatha Christie for March Mystery Madness. Now, most of you who have followed my channel for years will know I routinely read Agatha Christie. She's honestly the only mystery writer I have in my collection, besides Lady Ugly's Secret, which is horrible and I don't want to ever read it again. I don't know why I still have it in my collection, but I do. And The Moonstone by Bilky Collins, which I don't particularly want to reread anyway, except for maybe for Victober, if I wanted to do Victober. So it's pretty much all Agatha Christie all the time, which I'm not opposed to. I mean, I really enjoy her work. Um, so I will be reading two novels from this anthology or this omnibus edition miss marvel meets murder i'll be reading a pocket full of rye and a mirror cracked a uh, pocket full of rye is my personal favorite uh, miss marvel novel it's about um the murder of a wealthy businessman named rex fortescue um whose murder seems to replicate the nursery rhyme sing a song of sixpence um and i just i've loved a pocket full of rye for years um and mirror cracked is i would say my second favorite uh miss marple novel it's a later one it focuses on uh, changes that come to saint mary mead in the um, 1950s and 1960s um, that really sort of make St. Mary Mead not quite what it was, although still very much St. Mary Mead, is a story of the second time a murder has been committed at Gossington Hall. Uh, not necessarily with the Bantries in residence, although Dolly Bantry is still there, she just have a, has a cottage home rather than the hall itself. The hall has been bought by a an American or an which she might actually be a British American actress. Um, so anyway, really enjoyed that one too. So looking forward to a uh, weekend of Agatha Christie. Although maybe I ought to think about picking up some more mysteries, but I might not. Anyway, so over the course of the work week, or 
I'll be doing um, hopefully now I can mention when I showed this novel for my um, uh, library tour I have a lot of trepidations about this book um, but I think it's well past time I finally get around to reading it and that is The Women's War by Jenna Glass it's an epic fantasy about a woman who's come to the throne um, she's the only heir so she's inherits the throne um, in a world in a culture that is incredibly patriarchal um, I'm thinking something happens um, either she's not exactly allowed to rule she's more of a figurehead or a puppet ruler than a ruling in her own right or something else happens and she flees with a number of women into uh, the wilderness where they develop uh, powers and eventually um, begin to try to write the band the gender balance or something like that and I think that's what this is about um, it's been a while since I watched um, Thomas of SS 180's um, hauling this book and I think he reviewed it but I don't know for sure so anyway so let me go have a go at the women's war and if I do end up bailing, I'll find something else to read, but I'll touch on that when the next weekly reads. So, outside of my reading plans for this weekend and next week, um, I'm continuing with my 2022 library tour. Um, only five more videos to go. There are five shelves. So, next Friday will be the end of the library tour and I have to say I'm quite looking forward to it this library tour has been exhausting <laughs> just exhausting and I guess a bit disheartening because of I mean as much as I love science fiction and fantasy it really does not feel like it um I mean either I haven't read a lot of the science fiction and fantasy I've added in my collection or I don't like them and it's it's rather disheartening um, but that's something I think I will touch on when I do my wrap up uh, the following Monday so yeah and then I think of course since I've reached a thousand books um, I put out a Q&A call so, which is going on and so I'll be doing that video March 30th the day before I do my um, book haul uh, see is there anything else so I did finish uh, the second season of Castlevania which I quite liked although the last episode um, episode 8 of season 2 was not terribly good it was a epilogue set up for season three and it was a bit stinky <laughs> although episode seven was amazing it was basically most of it was devoted to Trevor Sypha and Alucard fighting Dracula and that was an amazing amazing episode um, so I don't know when exactly I'll be getting to season three of Castlevania. Maybe this coming week, maybe another week. I've been listening to music this past week and have been I've had quite a bit of fun. I listened to two um, CDs by Tori Amos. I listened to a good chunk of a CD by Miyavi and um, Poses by uh, Rufus Wainwright. And I think I might continue with Rufus Wainwright, or am I even go on to Owen Pollitt this tonight? I don't know for sure. So, anyway, BookTube, that's all I got for this weekly reads. Um, of course, I'll be back next week to finish off the 2022 library tour and then start um, 
doing some tags the following week, which I'll talk about next week's we'll read. So until next week, BookTube, thank you. Have a great evening and weekend, and stay safe.